I'm Trey Roberts. This is my wife, Erica. We want to welcome you this morning to the Sunday service at 10 a.m. Uh, today is Easter, uh, Resurrection Sunday. We are excited about our risen Savior. And we are excited because of what he has done for us, as well as, as what he has availed to us. So we're going to do some things this morning. We're going to go into God's Word. But I just want to open it up with just, you know, I want you to reflect back over your life that growing up as a kid, those who grew up in the church, you know, um, what Sunday, Easter Sunday was like, you know, for, for us as kids, you know, my mom always did the special things, you know, she made sure that we had new suits and even most of them she was sold on the sewing machine and we would get the chicks, you know, go to the Ben Franklin uh, the 10 cent store and they were buying the chicks. You can get them for 10 cents each. You would bring those there and they would be spray painted and all of those things was a, was a newness of life. You know, that's what Easter is. It's about the newness of life. And so we would enjoy those things, you know, and everybody would be excited on Sunday. We would have Easter speeches and I remember my cousin, his mother would always gather all the Easter speeches up for all of the kids and everybody get excited. As you get older, you know, you, you don't want to do as many speeches, you understand. But that's what we was doing, or that's what we did during that time and, and, um, and on, on Easter. And you get before the church and when people get before the church, oh man, everybody is nervous and they want you to say your speech. And, and one of, some of the funniest part is when the little kids come up there and they won't say anything, they just look. Or sometimes they would say, Jesus risen, you know. I mean, just small things. And people will get excited about that because that's what it was to us. That was the tradition of Easter, you know, here in Mississippi where I grew up. What was your tradition? Um, you know, I remember some of the same things we always had to do. I grew up in a, a, a Baptist, missionary Baptist church. And so we definitely always had an Easter program and speeches. I always had a long speech. Um, and was you know happy to get up in front of the church and, and recite my speech. We always had pretty dresses, and I remember um, the little girls always had. We got our hair done, you know, real special and curls, bows and ribbons. Ribbons were really big for for us and everybody. Uh, you know, you saw people at church maybe that you only saw twice a year at Easter and Christmas. Some families only came then. Uh, but everybody dressed up and was excited and, you know, just the, uh, there was a lot of, you know, pageantry over the Easter program and things like that. But I remember also the tradition of family being together and um, having dinner and just enjoying each other. And so that was special and having a, a big feast. And it was all a celebration in, you know, Jesus name. You know, that, that, that is the exciting part. That is tra the tradition that we, 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 we came up with. You know, and that's the tradition that we lived at that time because it was part of the, you know, where we were at that time in our lives. And when you look back, you're so appreciative of those times. Hey, Aunt Louise, glad you joined us. Katrina and Vanessa, glad you joined us. Gene, I'm glad that you're joining us. And good morning, Valencia. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. And so we are. We were excited about the aroma of Easter. You know, here in the farming part of the world, guess what? You know, we would. You know, that would be the time when everybody would plant their garden on Good Friday. You know, that therefore, you know, to us it meant that the the cold front was over, the frost was gone, and now we can really start. And these are things that are very important because the reason why they are so important is because it is about the newness of life. Jesus' death on the cross was about the ending of an old part of life, the way that people knew it. And now it's about the newness of life, about those things that are getting ready to come forth. That's what resurrection is about. It's about freshness, revival. The resurrection is about excitement and expectation. And man, this thing is coming now, and what are we going to do with it? That's what resurrection is about. So I'm going to take this time just to pray before we go into the message. Is there anything that you have on your heart that you want to, to share? 
Um, I just want to share. We've been uh, going through the uh, Why Easter devotional with the with the kids, mm-hmm. and it's just a really it's on Holy Bible app, and it's a great devotional to to go through. Um, whether it's Easter or not, to be able to explain some things to your kids and have discussion, and that's what it's all about. Um, so I just want to encourage people: don't stop, uh, you know, doing those devotionals, or you know, it's not too late to to start one because it's really important for our kids to have a good foundation and understanding of the gospel. And the more conversations we can have with them, the better. And the more meaningful these days will, will be for them as they grow and mature, just like they are for us. Praise God. Mm-hmm. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Well, Father, we come to you this morning just to give you thanks for all that you do and who thank you are. You, Father, we thank you for your awesomeness. Lord, we yes. thank you for your son that you gave for the remission of our sin. Not that he sinned, Lord God. We did it, but he paid for it. Lord, we thank you for that. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to come to the throne room, what he has made available to us. Those things are so awesome, God, because we want to receive the fullness of who you are. Not just a tradition, not about an Easter egg or Easter basket. We want the fullness of what you avail to us. And Father, we thank you that this day, this is a blessed day. From this day forward, we will always be blessed. This day coming up to it, we were blessed. We are blessed people because you are a blessed God and you blesses your people. Amen. So, Father, we thank you right now. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we go through the God's word and as we reminisce about what Easter was all about, I want us to go a little bit further. Let's go back a little bit so that we can build toward where we are now. I want you to think about these 12 guys who have met this, this great man. They call him the Messiah. They call him the teacher. And they met him in various ways. They, they came to Jesus. And they chose to give up everything that they had so they can follow him. And there was, and there was more than these, these 12 disciples. In some location, there were 70 disciples. But there came a disruption and and there was a, came a, a time when it was their faith was tried. And Jesus asked them, and the question he asked them, because some people chose not to follow him any longer. They chose to walk away. See, that's something that we have to understand, that when we are doing anything for God, we're doing anything for anything that's worthwhile, some will come and some will choose to go another way. And you got to be okay with that. You understand? And so that's what they did. They chose to go another way. But these 12, Jesus looked up them and he asked them, he said, so will you also will leave me? And they asked, they said to him, said, Lord, if we leave you, where else can we go? You are the one that brings about life. There's nowhere else for us to go. And so here these guys, they followed Jesus all of this time. They saw the miracle. Jesus did something that was very important to them. Guess what he did? He gave them his name. He said that in my name, you'll be able to go out and cast out demons. In my name, you'll be able to heal the sick. In my name, you'll be able to raise the dead. All of these things he gave them in his name. And they saw all of these things. And so they knew who he was. And one day he asked Peter, he said, who do people say I am? And then Peter said that, some say that you, John the Baptist, some say this. Then Jesus asked him a question. Peter, who do you say I am? Peter said, you are the Messiah. You are the Savior of the world. And guess what Jesus told him? He said that the Father must have showed this to you because there's no other way that you can know this. And so here they are. Now they, they got faith in Jesus. They're following Jesus. And they're excited about who Jesus is. Happy Easter, Katrina. They're excited about who he is and what he has done. But their thought was a little off because they thought he came to restore Israel. But in essence, he came to restore the kingdom, God's kingdom. And they were was, was at two different places, but Jesus knew that they were going to get to where he needed them to be. And so look what he did. So anyway, you know, Judas betrayed him. And Judas' betrayer, here Jesus Christ, 
have given himself. Look, he said, nobody take it, my life. I give it up. So he gave it up. He didn't fight about it. No, Peter, he drew the sword and cut the man he off and all those things. So he could defend Jesus. He said, do you not you understand that if I need a defense, the only thing I got to do is just ask the Father and I have a legion of angels down to take care of all this? Wipe this whole place clean. He said, this is not my purpose. And so Peter withdrew himself. And so they now they're watching Jesus as he is going through the trial, as he is being rejected by the people who he came to save. See, sometimes when you're living and you're loving people, don't, don't feel as though that everybody's going to accept you. You're going to be rejected. Some will reject you today and accept you tomorrow. Some may not accept you at all. Some may totally reject you. But nonetheless, you do what God has called you to do. Hey, Kel, I'm glad you joined us. And so this is what Jesus is at. So now he's on trial. And they take Jesus and they place him and they give them a choice. And their choice is, do you, we got, we got, we, we, somebody got to be taken out of here. And somebody got to be free. He said, we're going to give you a choice. We're going to offer you either bar Jesus or this Jesus. One, we can accept free because that is the, 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 the Jewish law. We can accept, let one go free. And guess what that shows? They said, choose, we choose bar Jesus to be set free. And this man, Jesus, would choose to be crucified. Think about this. The people whom you came to save, the people who you came to serve, would choose a malefactor, meaning a criminal, someone whom they know was a criminal. And here's a man who never committed a crime, but they chose the criminal over the Christ. And here, this is where they are. Oh, I ain't made that yet. We, we, we're doing the foundation here. We're laying the foundation. And so here they are. They are excited about Jesus. But now they are upset because now he's on his way to Calvary. Man. He's on his way to Calvary. The Calvary means the place of, skull, of the skull. A dark place. Nobody want to go to Calvary. i never forget when I first got married, Uncle William preached a message. Everybody want to go to glory, but nobody want to go through Calvary. There's no way to get to glory except through Calvary. And that being over 20 some years ago. And so here he is now. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the spirit of God upon me even as I speak this. It is touching somebody's life. And look what he said here. So here Jesus is. He is now going to Calvary, hanging on a cross. Between two things. Here he is in this place. And they crucified him. And he's gone. Guess what happened to those 12. Well the 11 now because Judas has, has committed suicide. So now guess what happened to the 12. The 11 that is left. They're confused. Have you ever had something that hit you so hard in your life that you lose your faith? I mean it shake your faith. You wonder, what is this? What was I believing? Because if God loved me, he would have never allowed this to happen. There are some things in life that will come and make you say, whoo. There are some things that come in life that you have to depend upon other people's faith. Because guess what? God has really been slapped. And here are these guys now. They're going back to what they did before they met Jesus. And so guess what happened? Now we're going to go to the scripture. Let's go to Mark chapter 16. This is Mark 16. Jesus had been crucified. He'd been put in the tomb. And now on the Sabbath, verse 1 says, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, the mother, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they could do what? Go in and anoint Jesus' body. They're going to prepare him for burying and all those things. That's what they went to do. First, you know, the thing that really gets me is of everybody whom Jesus could have presented himself to, he presented himself first to Mary Magdalene. Who was Mary Magdalene? The woman 
who had so much sin in her life that when he met her and he delivered her, she preached Jesus the rest of her life. You see, that's how come we can't just get caught up on churchy people. We got to get caught up on people who are not in the church. We got to love those people who are outside of it because guess what? As Jesus touched Mary Magdalene, guess what? He also touches them. As he touched Mary Magdalene, he also touches us. Because there was a time when I was a Mary Magdalene, chief of sin. But guess what he did? He came and he, he made it right. And so here he is. They see Jesus. Verse 2 said that Mark 16, verse 2. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, that is like this morning. Very first of the week, some people think the very first day of the week is Monday. No, it's Sunday. They were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? And they asked it because how can we go in there and prepare his body when we can't even get into the tomb? Who's going to roll it away? Look what it said. Verse 4 said, But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled away. So here these women going to prepare Jesus' body so they can go through a ceremony and doing what we know, when I, we call it uh, embalming with these different herbs and stuff. Now they came to the tomb and they asked the question before getting there, who's going to roll the stone away? Because we most certainly can. Then when they got there, the stone was already rolled away. Look what it says, verse 5. Mark 6, verse 5. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alone. Look, something ain't right about this. What's going on here? Something is not right about this. This is not what we were expecting. Verse 6 then. Look what the young man told him. He understood their fear. Anytime we're dealing with God, he always understands our fear. Oftentimes, our fear changes our mind, but it does not change God's mind. God is willing to work with us beyond our fear. And so look what he said. The young man said, don't be alarmed. In other words, don't be fearful. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Oh, man. See this place where they laid him, but go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. He had told them about this before, that when I get ready to go to this place. And so he was telling them, I go to prepare a place. He's telling them, he's been telling them all along that I'm preparing some things for you. You cannot receive them now because guess what? The, the step that to get you there is not yet presented, but I'm going to prepare a place for you. He had been telling them all along. And so look what it says. They sent Mary on, on a journey. The very first missionary, the very first evangelist after the resurrection, was a woman who lived a life of prostitution, who got saved. Now she's proclaiming the word. We got to understand that. That's what he availed to us because sometimes when we look at things, we don't know what this has to do for us. How does this Christian faith avail us? How, how does it, it, it benefit us? See, you got to know what it benefits, the benefits you get from it. So here's Mary now. She's going on and she's going to talk to the, to the 12. Look what it says, verse 8. Trembling and bewildered, nervous and not fully understanding, the women went out and fled from the two. They said nothing to anyone because what? They were afraid. Have you ever seen anybody raised from the dead before? Have you ever heard of anybody being raised from the dead before? Wouldn't you be bewildered? Would you have some, some things you got to reconcile within yourself? Well, it's the same thing with these ladies. Man, we've never seen them like this before. We heard him talk about it. We've never actually seen this before. Verse 9 said, when Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, 
out of whom, guess what he did? What, what, who was Mary? I already told you. Out of whom he had driven seven demons. She was demonically possessed. Don't let people believe that because you're dealing with some spiritual things that God can't use you. He'll get rid of those things and guess what? And he will place himself in his place. So anyways, this is who Mary Magdalene, look what it says verse 10. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. They still upset. Of all of these years we followed Jesus, of all these miracles that we went through, all the people whom he went through and, 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 and delivered from the dead, and all of these things, Lazarus and all these people here, why is he going through this? One asked him the question when he was hanging on the cross. You deliver all these people, why can't you deliver yourself? See, that's what our finite mind brings us to. But look what it says here. Verse 13 says. Mark 16. I mean, yeah, yeah, Mark, Mark 16 and uh, verse 11. When they heard that Jesus was alive, they, that she had seen him, guess what the one who'd been believing him, who left everything, who left their family, left their business, have done all of these things, Found behind Jesus all of these three long years. Mm -hmm. But when Mary told him what Jesus said, look what the word said. They did not believe it. Man, we can't believe this. Is this true? Is it for real? Verse 12. Mark 16, verse 12. Afterwards, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the countryside. See, sometimes he'll show up in a way that you don't, you don't recognize him. Sometimes he'll come in a different color. Sometimes he'll come in a different accent. Sometimes, sometimes he will come to you when you knew me to be a sinner. Now he saved me. I may show up and you can't forget where I was and so you can't receive Jesus. So Jesus came as in a different form and they did not believe him. But look what it said. Verse 13 said, they returned and reported it to the rest. But they did not believe them either. Jesus is the, 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 the Christ of the impossible. Don't ever box him in as to who he is or what he can do. Don't care what you're dealing with this morning. In your life, don't give up on life. Because guess what? Jesus won't give up on you. I don't care how dim it is. So many people are dealing with job situation and, and, and some of them have lost loved ones and, and, and people have gone through so many different things. These last three weeks have been, have totally changed the world. Yeah. That's how life can happen in a short period of time. What you thought was your security, you're not even secure anymore. That's why you have to put your security in Jesus and that brings us back to the question that Jesus asked Peter who do they say I am and then the next question who do you say I am yeah. am I able to bring you out of your situation good morning Brenda glad you joined us that's what Jesus is saying am I able and so anyway look what happened here verse 13 they returned and reported to the west, but they did not believe them. Verse 14 says, Later Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Why was that important? Hey, Johnny, glad you joined us. It was important because guess why it was important? Jesus poured himself into the 12 people, to 11 of them. If the faith of Christianity is going to go forward, shouldn't the foundation of the faith believe? Yeah. These are the apostles, the apostles. These are the fathers of the faith. So Jesus got on them. He rebuked them. Why? Because of their unbelief. And they're stubborn. He didn't just say you didn't believe, but you were stubborn. You stubbornly refused what they told you. I have been telling you this all along. I have been ministering to you all along. 
but you were stubborn. You did not want to believe it. You wanted to stay within your bounds of who I am. I'm trying to tell you with everything in me is that look, I am the son of God. I have no limits. See, that's what we have to understand. Take the limits off. Stop limiting God. Stop trying to box him in. He has no limit. He has no limit for you. If you're limited, you're limited by your own mindset. And so Jesus got on them. Look what he said in verse 15. That's Mark 16, verse 15. He said to them, because I want to make sure that you have no limits. And I don't want you raising up people in the faith that has limits. So I, I'm asking you to do this. Look what he asked them to do. Go into all the world and preach this gospel of unlimitation to all creation. Preach it to everybody. Go into the world and preach this limitless gospel. That's who I am. Look what it said. Verse 16 said, Whoever believes in his baptized will be saved, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. What he's saying is, I came and paid an ultimate price for your salvation. Why did I need to be saved? <clears throat> Why did I need it? Why did I need salvation? You need to be saved and you needed salvation because guess what? You need to be connected back to God. You see, the offense that we had wasn't to one another. We offended God. So when Jesus paid the price, he paid the price not to the devil. He didn't offend the devil. We didn't offend Satan. We offended God. That's who the offense was against. Satan don't care about sin. In other words, he loves sin. He's the creator of sin. It's God who is holy. It's God who we offend when we sin. That's why we are saved. And so Jesus said, I'm going to reunite you back to the Father. I'm going to bring you back. So you don't need no go-between. You don't need to sacrifice every year. You don't need an atonement. I am the atonement. That's why they kept saying, he is the lamb. Look what John said. He is the lamb that what? Take away the sin of the world. Why does the word, the sin need to be taken away? So that we can have the relationship with God. That's what Jesus did when he was resurrected. That's what he brought us. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bulldog, glad you joined us, man. So that's what he brought us. We didn't offend Satan. We offended God. But let's go down a little bit further. Verse 16. Look what he says. Verse 16 says, Whoever believes in this baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Look what else he says. And these signs will accompany those who believe. Jesus said, you're going to be able to see those who really believe because they're going to do some spectacular things. They're going to do stuff that normal folks can't do. Look what else he said. And these signs will follow those, accompany those who believe in my name, they will be able to do what? Drive out demons. You will have the power. In my name, they will speak in new tongues. You will have the power. Glad you joined us, Fernando. Praise God. In my name, he said. In my name, he made to drive out demon. In my name, he made to speak a new tongue. And guess what? He said they will be able to pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly things, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the head of the sick. These are the signs that follows them who believe. In other words, you don't walk in fear, you walk in faith. You don't walk in limits, you walk unlimitless. You don't walk in, in the possible, you walk in the impossible. And this is what he avowed to us. That's the time he wanted to bring us back to God. So that we can have a world of world changers. That's who you are. You're world changers. Stop limiting yourself. Good morning, Cora. I'm glad you're joining us. Stop limiting yourself. You're world changers. 
You are ministers of impossible. Glad you joined us, man. God bless you. You are world changers. That's who you are. Stop limiting yourself. So that's what he availed to us. So look what let's go down to verse 19. Verse 19, that's Mark 16, verse 19. Look what it says. After the Lord has spoken to them, why did he have to speak to them? He had to connect them back and get them back to a place to get past their emotions. Because they were mourning at first. They were sad. They saw what he went through. He had to recollect them so that they can come back to understand, look, I didn't put three years in you to, to, to lose it all now. I put this time in you so that you can go forth and you will preach to the world about the, the uh, you preach to them about the impossible because in me it become possible. And so he said, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God. In other words, I am now, I don't need to be with you any longer. I'm sitting on the right hand of the Father because this is where the power is. Now I'm here to do intercession on your behalf. I don't have to keep trying to convince God that you're not a sinner anymore because I paid that price. I don't have to do that anymore. Because guess what? When you believe in me, guess what? You're saved. But if you don't believe in me, guess what? Then you are condemned. Somebody got to convince God to do what with you because you condemned. But since your faith in me, I don't have to do that any longer. So look what he said. Now I sit it on the right hand of the Father. And when I sit on the right hand of the Father, what he said? Verse 20 said, Then the disciples did what? Went out and did what? Preached everywhere. That's what they did. They went out and preached everywhere. Glad you joined us, Jane. Now they're going out and they're preaching the messages everywhere. This is what the disciples thought. But look what it says. I like this part. This is what we, we've been getting to. Verse 20 said, Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And that's what it said. And the Lord worked with them. Oh, ain't you glad that he worked with you? Isn't that, ain't, that is so refreshing that he works with us. Even beyond our doubt and our unbelief, he works with us. When you go out and preach and you minister, it's not all about what you're telling someone. It's about the Lord working with you. Yeah. It's about his spirit working in you. So as they went out and preached, the word said, then they went out and preached everywhere. Well, how can you go everywhere when you didn't believe? Now they believe. And because they do believe, guess what? They will now go out and preach everywhere. Look what it says. And the Lord worked with them, and guess what else he did? And confirmed his word. He worked with them, and he confirmed them. How did he confirm them? Well, look what it says. By the signs that accompanied them. Are people getting saved? Or are they getting set free? Or are they becoming delivered? Or they've been united to the church. See, these are the signs when he's working with you. He ain't saying you got to be perfect, but you got to be willing. These are the signs that he's working with you. These are the signs. This is what resurrection was all about. Bringing us to the Father so that we can do the impossible. We are serving the everlasting. We are living the eternal. And our life is all about hope. I want to say to you this morning that if you missed it somewhere along the way and you feel like you're not there where God wants you at and you feel as though that the impossible is not even in your perspective, even in your viewpoint, I want to take out this time this morning to welcome you, to invite you to come to the kingdom of God. Because the same price that he paid then, 
He didn't have to pay it but once. See, it's not, it's, 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 it's not like when we have to pay on our credit card every month, every month. No, he paid it all. The debt has been paid. The debt is free. He, salvation, he paid it. He did all that to bring you to where you can come to God. That's who he is. That's what he invited you to become. That's the invitation. So I want to invite you to Christ this morning. If you don't know him as your personal Savior, if you don't know him as Lord, you don't have that relationship, guess what? He wants you to have. I want to ask that you bow your heads right now, everyone under the sound of my voice. For those of you who want to give your life to the Lord, follow this prayer. Lord, Father, we come to you just to thank you for life. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Yes. We believe that he is the savior of the world. We believe that he paid the price for my sins. Lord, my faith is in you. And I believe by the voice and the word of God that he paid the price and by faith I receive all that he paid. And you said in your word that if I confess Jesus with my mouth and believe it in my heart, it's then thou shalt be saved. For those of you who who, who prayed that prayer of faith, I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God because guess what it said? Thou shalt be saved. I want you to connect with us, continue to follow us. We want you to share this message because guess what? It's a refreshing message because the world is dim right now. As though the light is, is in, it, you don't really see it anymore. It's gloomy. Guess what? It's not gloomy for the church. Because it's the time, it's harvest time. We are harvesting. We are raising up leaders. We are excited about what God is doing in your life as well as in the church. So we want to thank you for joining us this morning. And we want to bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, man. Because God is awesome. We serve an awesome God. And when things start looking rough, guess what? It's just getting right for God. It just getting right for God. Amen. Praise God. Do you have anything you want to share before we get off this morning? Uh, well, we'd love to have people, you know, connect with us. We know that there are a lot of needs out there and uh, prayer requests, um, things going on with uh, people or loved ones. So uh, send us a prayer request uh, through um, uh, Messenger. You can also leave it in the comments as well as on our um, uh, website. So go to yourvineconnection.org and there's a prayer request um, form there that you can fill out to reach out to us. So we'd like to just thank you and um, invite you to come back next Sunday uh, to visit with us and to have service with us. But yeah, we definitely want to connect with you and pray for you and your family in any way that you need. Praise God. Let's bow our heads and close it out. Father, we bless this day. We bless your people, Lord God. We pray and ask that your Holy Spirit would dwell in the lives and the heart of your people. That your word would be illuminated. That their hunger will become even more intense. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless this day. Amen. 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 Y'all have a good day. Happy Easter. Praise God.